Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Okay, so I gotta say, I gotta agree with Nick here. They are hyping these ETFs far too much. It's hard not to think of them as the largest sell the news event that is happening right now, guys. Subjective views uh, also chiming in on this. There may be an event on the horizon. Vandal from Black Swan Capitalist also saying, I agree. YT Socrates saying, yet in the 30 years I've been paying attention, never has the mainstream media pointed me in the right direction. Uh, well, it's a bit of a distraction technique. I got to say, uh, Bitcoin has been moving on this news. This is Bitcoin on the daily. And uh, as you guys can see over the last couple of days now, we have seen Bitcoin back in the green. Uh, let me throw it on the hourly. You guys can see since yesterday, we did see a big move to the upside for Bitcoin. Uh, so it did test this area here of support and uh, did bounce back up yesterday. If you guys remember, Bitcoin was trading down in and around here. So uh, down in and around here, that was about 24 hours ago. And then, you know, yesterday saw some bullish Bitcoin news, which got the price pumping. However, we have not uh, gotten over this level of resistance yet. So we do need to see at least on the one hour or the uh, shorter term time frame, we do need to see Bitcoin get past 43,400. But ultimately, we really need to see Bitcoin get past the uh, that interyear high of $44,700 per BTC uh, in order to really confirm that this trend is going to continue to move to the upside. Now, I still think we are going to see a correction. I don't think that Bitcoin is going to see new highs quite yet. That is my personal opinion. And of course, it is going to bring the rest of the crypto market down with it, as Bitcoin usually does. We've got XRP right now uh, seeing a bit of a downturn. XRP right now trading at about 0 0.608, about 60 cents, just under 61 cents. The rest of the crypto market, uh, you know, generally following, I mean, XRP uh, is up a bit in the last 24 hours, along with many other cryptocurrencies like BNB coin, up a whopping 7.27%, waking up from the dead there. Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum up uh, about 4.5%, respectively. We got Solana's up 8.39%. So, uh, you know, the rest of the crypto market is waking up uh, slowly but surely. Greed is also climbing. Greed today is at 72. So, guys, is this sustained? Are we going to see more highs? Uh, for the King Crypto, but more importantly, what the heck is happening to XRP? Are we ever going to see XRP move, uh, you know, to the same beat as some of these other cryptos that have been performing quite well? Some things to be paying attention to. T Analyst here posting this, just uh, another chart, just kind of demonstrating where we are in the bull market. And, uh, you know, the fact that we're still very early on might hint to a few things. So we got to remember 2011 uh, was the bear market for Bitcoin. And then by 2012, 2013, that is when we saw that swing to the upside. Now, I wasn't there for that time, but that is when we saw the trend pivot. Same in 2014, by 2015 to 2017, that is when we saw that full-fledged bull market. 2018, I was a huge participant in this, my first bear market. Then we saw that slow shift by 2019, and then finally the top by 2021. And then, of course, all of us have had to endure the 2022 bear market. But now, guys, we're seeing that pivot. We're seeing that shift. So you guys can see the trend slowly changing directions, moving to the upside, a slight shift uh, moving up. And so 2024, guys, going to be a very, very exciting year in terms of uh, price movements, even for all the altcoins uh, that we have diversified in. For my Patreon subscribers, you know what I'm talking about. Some of those altcoins are waking up, but guys, we're not even close to the top yet so we're going to keep an eye on this market of course uh but i still do think this is uh you know this is still a bit of a fake out i think uh you know as per what nick is saying up here it's hard not to think of these events as the largest sell the news event we are going to see what he means by that is that uh, we are going to still see a major correction for bitcoin before we start to see the bulls really run now bill morgan also uh, bringing this up this is correct but placed in the context of xrp's price action over the last month it is not great. XRP is down over 2% over the last month. Many, but not all top 50 coins are up over the last month. Uh, in that context, the fall was harder comparatively uh, than could have been expected. And so far, its rebound today has not been all that robust. I don't read much into a month's price action, though, in these uh, in these particular markets. 
Convictions need to be deeper than a day, week, or month of price action. So he was retweeting out Moon Lambo's tweet for all the people that are under the false impression that XRP has dropped more ferociously than any other coin in the past 24 hours. And then he gives some math here. I think, uh, you know, for the XRP community, when you're seeing some of these high flyers really, really move. And, uh, you know, if, if you just click on the 24 hour here, you can see uh, some of the best performing cryptocurrencies here. Look at that VeChain uh, number five on the list, up 17.84% in the last 24 hours. Uh, but, you know, some of these cryptocurrencies, well, a couple of them here are on the $10,000 plus portfolio. You can see, you know, these high flyers. I mean, if we look up, uh, let's say, let's look at the top one, SEI, SEI, USD, you guys can see some of these top flyers have done uh, very, very well over the last, uh, this is just over the last day. You can see uh, SE, SEI went up 50% uh, just in the last day. What about Woo, W-O-O? Let's take a look at that. W-O-O, this is on the hourly. Let me throw these on the daily to give you guys a better sense of uh, what is going on for some of these particular cryptocurrencies. Uh, and, you know, even just over the last month here, uh, let's just take it from the beginning of November, roughly, give or take, just right and around here. You can see uh, a 126% gain for WOO. INJ is another big mover, guys, up 25.4% in the last 24 hours. And so, you know, when you're looking at all these other altcoins, guys, this is par for the course. Look at that. A huge mover uh, since last year, December of 2022. But even just uh, in the last month or so, we have seen this particular cryptocurrency up about uh, almost 200%, 194%. So what's the deal with XRP, guys? It is going to move even though we have not seen it move over the last month or so. Uh, so, you know, when, when you're looking at these price moves in isolation, of course, it's not going to look as uh, as exciting as, uh, you know, some of these other cryptos. I mean, as of uh, November the 1st, XRP is remaining fairly flat. It was trading in and around 60 cents on November the 1st, and uh, today it's trading at 60 cents. So what are we to expect? Well, you know, I have to do one of these videos every now and then because the XRP community is getting disillusioned. But guys, you know, it's all part of a greater narrative. And uh, if you've been in this space for a while, you probably have a better grasp on it. Let me bring you guys the latest of what is happening or at least what has happened in the last 24 hours. And uh, we can, we're going to analyze some of this stuff, take a look at why some of these coins are pumping, uh, you know, why Bitcoin's pumping, obviously, watch your guru here, bringing this up, Grayscale CEO says the spot Bitcoin ETF approval would unlock about $30 trillion worth of advised wealth for Bitcoin. Guys, this is Michael Sonenshine of the Grayscale uh, Bitcoin ETF. Here's what he said. He's been making the rounds recently. Here's what he said on Squawk Box. I mean, it was as low as 17000 last uh, this year. Sure, sure. Well, you know, Joe, I'm not one to make price predictions, but I do think there is a lot of optimism again in the market. I think a lot of investors are adding Bitcoin to their portfolios. And when we look ahead to the hopeful approval for spot Bitcoin ETFs, it really is going to unlock the opportunity to a part of the investment community that for better or worse, but I would say for worse, has unfortunately been locked out of the opportunity to participate in having Bitcoin exposure in their portfolios. So we're really talking about the advised market here in the U.S., which is today about $30 trillion worth of advised wealth um, that we hope the approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs, the uplisting of GBTC, will allow for that opportunity and for those investors to partake in it as well. So firstly, we've got $30 trillion of advised wealth. This coming from the Grayscale CEO, guys, and they uh, already have the GBTC Bitcoin spot product uh, that is available uh, to purchase on, uh, you know, regular stock exchanges. Uh, $30 trillion. I mean, we've got to remember market cap right now for uh, the entire crypto market is just sitting above $1.6 trillion. So, um, you know, this money is not necessarily going to go into all crypto. But if it does go into these Bitcoin spot products, these ETFs, once they are finally approved, we got to remember this is the big money sitting on the sidelines, the big guys that want to get into regulated, uh, uh, new, uh, you know, digital regulated asset class. This is going to mean huge things for Bitcoin. And so, you know, in, in a spec market, I guess we, we could call it, you know, the, the retail is front running this thing. And so, um, you know, it, it's just on the anticipation, I, just as easily we could see some negative news come out and then this thing plummet. So I'm just waiting for that because this is, you know, a classic example of, as Nick puts it, they are hyping these ETFs far too much. It's hard not to think of them as the largest sell the news event 
there is. So we've got this. We've also got uh, Sonen Shine making the rounds on uh, different news outlets. Here's what he said over here, courtesy of XRP Drops, CEO of Grayscale. The SEC should and does, in fact, want to create an even playing field. So he does comment on the SEC. Listen to this timeline because that's what everyone is wondering about. Uh, their market consensus seems to be that the SEC will go with a common clock approach that it'll approve and allow all the uh, pending applications to list on the same day. There's also speculation that GBTC, it might not actually convert on that same day. What do you think is behind that speculation? Well, I think the SEC now has you know, certainly on the heels of our court decision earlier this summer, where the DC Circuit actually ruled that the SEC was acting arbitrarily and capriciously, I think that the SEC should and does in fact want to create an even playing field. Um, and so we've publicly been advocates of the fact that when the commission is ready to give the requisite approvals for spot products to come to market, that it should be done all at once. The issuers who are operationally ready to launch their products should come out the gate all at once. Um, and I'm certainly proud to share with you the great scale team has been operationally ready to uplist GBTC for a long time now. The SEC was acting arbitrarily and capriciously. That's right, arbitrarily and capriciously. Well, you remember what that was from, the Ripple SEC lawsuit. Judge Annalisa Torres did come down on the SEC and uh, stated that now infamous fact. But here you have again Michael Sonenshine talking about uh, the level playing field and, and the, uh, the fact that the SEC, uh, you know, at this point, they don't really have too much goodwill from the courts. So they have to make very, very careful moves, I think. And uh, Michael Sonenshine just pointing it out. Those who are ready to come out of the gate, the SEC should in fact green light everybody all at once uh, to allow all these companies who want to offer a Bitcoin ETF that level playing field. So wanted to thank XRP Drops for pointing that out. We've also got Bobby Zagoda from Bitstamp. They're a Ripple partner. The most important trigger is the ETF optimism. This is an access point for a whole new segment of investors and participants. That is an avenue that works really well and is well proven amongst lots of people who participate in traditional financial markets. Guys, listen to this. What do you think is driving those prices right now? Do you think ETF optimism is part of the equation? Uh, yes, I do. And um, yeah, what a year it's been. It's been uh, just never a dull moment. I, I was told five years ago when I came to the crypto industry full time that it was <laughs> to expect um, quite an experience and it has been. Uh, but to answer your question, absolutely. There's a few triggers that I think are underway here. And the, probably the most important one is this ETF optimism. And, um, you know, it's a it's an access point for a whole new segment of of investors and of participants. And it's a, you know, a, uh, an avenue that works really, really well and is well proven um, amongst lots and lots of people who, who participate in traditional financial services markets. So from a crypto perspective, it's just all positive. And um, we think the more, you know, the more participants, the more healthy the markets and the more healthy the markets, the more um, available this technology is to more people. So hitting that point home, healthy markets, uh, you know, will be uh, will make for the technology to be more available for all these financial players that want to get involved in cryptocurrency. So another great clip here from XRP Drops. Wanted to thank him for these two clips. We've also got Megan here posting this clip. Anthony Trenchev, okay, from Nexo. We are pretty confident that Bitcoin will hit $100,000 by 2024. So here come the price predictions, guys. The price predictions are coming. And he, and he mentions 2024 as kind of that general 12-month window. And so, uh, I mean, traditionally, what we have seen in the past is we have seen, you know, at that point in the bull run, uh, let's just bring up the uh, a Fibonacci on the former bull run here. 2024 would be a similar year to 2020, which would uh, bring us to right in and around here. We did meet the former all-time high in the last bull run. So, uh, I mean, if we were to put just a bit of a rough similarity here, you could see by uh, the end of 2020, we did reach all-time high. And so uh, what was all-time high in the last bull run? Well, for all intents and purposes, it was roughly $70,000, 68, 69,000 for a Bitcoin. Uh, I think it was higher than that. I think it was 69-ish. Uh, and so that too, let's not forget, was the price uh, based on this black swan event that we had uh, that we did not, that we're not going to have. Well, hopefully we're not going to have it this time around. So I could see, theoretically, I could see a $100,000 Bitcoin by the end of the year. He's making it sound like it could come sooner. Listen to this. What, 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 what kind of price levels are we going to see likely? Well, I am pretty confident we'll see 100000 within uh, 2024 per Bitcoin. 
Yeah, I mean, Bitcoin has done crazier things than That's double true. in pricing. And, uh, you know, we have flushed out the system of two things. One is leverage. So lots of uh, the buying is spot buying. Uh, which uh, gives you steadier hands to hold on to the Bitcoin that has been acquired. So this is always good. And then the second thing uh, is that leverage could build up and this usually is associated with the later cycles where we go into the mania state. And I think we are quite far from that. And, you know, this is something that me being a crypto native and I see how people are interacting and, you know, the retail is not in on this it's um it's a almost a hated rally it is uh, propelled mostly by the insiders and the people who already have been in crypto and have relocated uh their, their, their portfolios uh after the carnage of 2022 so i think you know um it's just a perfect alignment for this to continue in 2024 so a perfect alignment for this to continue in 2024 one hundred thousand dollar bitcoin uh, and I'm I'm assuming he means by the end of the year. I mean, it could happen sooner. We just don't know. I guess we'll have to keep our eye on that. So I wanted to thank Megan for pointing that out. And guys, we've got these uh, brand new commercials coming out too from Bitwise here. Who says it better? Well, I'll let the commercial speak for itself. You know what's interesting these days? Bitcoin. Cut. What if we get him? You know what's interesting these days? Bitcoin. Look for Bitwise, my friends. That's right, he's back in a Bitwise commercial for a Bitcoin-backed ETF. So we can see how this is all shaping out, hyping these ETFs uh, quite a bit. And guys, this is all stuff coming out in the last 24 hours alone. So, uh, you know, it's been flooding my Twitter. So, uh, you know, when we move to the politics, Mr. Hubert mentioning this lobbying priorities, if we look at consensus versus ripple, and this is just kind of a bit of a side note here with regards to the ETHgate scandal, because we are still looking, I mean, there's the Bitcoin on the one hand, but with regards to the technology, take a look at this agencies lobbied by consensus software in 2023. You can see these companies fully transparent commodity and futures trading commission, or rather these organizations, the department of the treasury, the financial crimes enforcement network, the National Institution of Standards and Technology, the National Security Council, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and the White House were all lobbied by consensus in 2023. Meanwhile, Ripple uh, only lobbied the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. So I think, uh, you know, the lobbying money also does speak volumes. And on the same token, though, uh, Team Ripple is putting a stake in the ground. This coming from Brad Garlinghouse, leading the charge with other industry leaders to support pro-innovation and pro-crypto candidates in 2024. So with regards to this uh, election that's coming up too, the U.S. cannot afford to continue taking a back seat on the global stage. Regulatory overreach, especially from the SEC, is actively moving the U.S. in the wrong direction. And other countries are taking full advantage of the lack of U.S. leadership. We need to advance leaders who will champion innovation and spearhead paths towards responsible regulation 2024 is the time to go back to first principles by encouraging initiatives to promote transparency innovation and a compliance first approach team ripple and i will not squander this opportunity he did post uh, this article here crypto titans launched 2024 election play with a 78 million dollar super pack spend uh with brian armstrong there as uh the front uh the, the the mascot there on the front of the page this campaign which has support from venture capital giants anderson horowitz u.s crypto exchange coinbase and cameron and tyler winklevoss marks a revival of the digital asset industry political operations following the downfall of crypto mega donor Sam Bankman Freed. So on the heels of this, uh, I mean, that seems like such a long time ago now. We are seeing, uh, you know, a new generation of donors from the crypto industry uh, coming up and now looking to make some moves supporting candidates who are going to be crypto friendly. And of course, it is their livelihood and Ripple is uh, not shying away from helping this endeavor. Uh, this is demonstrating a very serious commitment from the crypto industry to engage in the 2024 elections. This coming from Kara Calvert, the head of U.S. policy at Coinbase. That's what she said in an interview. Uh, the political push comes at a key moment for the crypto industry, which is lobbying the House GOP bills uh, that would help legitimize digital assets and create a new structure for regulating them. Legislation faces hurdles in the Senate with the Biden administration amid uh, consumer protection and financial crime concerns. Crypto firms are hoping a 2024 shakeup could help swing Washington policy 
in their direction. So uh, we've got a lot of players involved in this. I will link this in the description of the video for you guys if you're interested. I also wanted to show you guys this because I do truly believe that the world will be divided, a pre-ETF world and a post-ETF world when it comes to Bitcoin. Listen to this guys, courtesy of ISO 20022, let's do it. An interesting perspective here and I think you and I are in a very, very good spot. Listen to this. Well, how do you see the market in the minute? I, I describe it like this. There is going to be, you know, in about five years, we will look back on this time right now that me and you are talking at this very moment. And we will determine this time as a pre Bitcoin spot ETF time and a post Bitcoin spot ETF time. Uh, and the question will be for you is or for, for anyone watching is, were you in before the spot ETF or were you in? <laughs> after the spot ETF. This is a monumentally important moment for Bitcoin. And I, I genuinely believe that if you are too late to this, if you sleep on this because you're too busy, you know, trading or, uh, you know, trying to DCA, which is, I hate again, uh, trying to do all of these limp strategies, thinking that you are going to acquire Bitcoin. Bitcoin's going to price you out faster than you can imagine. Bitcoin is going to price you out. So a pre and post Bitcoin ETF world. I'm happy I've owned my Bitcoin since 2018, a fair portion of it anyway. And guys, in terms of XRP, not to worry. XRP does generally move last and fast. And we got to remember since the beginning of 2023, XRP has moved up, still has moved up about 80%. I know it is not uh, as exciting as we'd like it to be. I know it's not as exciting as we'd like it to be, but it is still up and I have a feeling it is going to catch up to the rest of these high flyers once the time is right. Remember, it is in the top 10. Crypto visibility is going to be important this bull run, guys, along with the on and off ramp, something we did not have last bull run. But that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.